Good evening and welcome to the Muskingum University Christmas Festival, a musical celebration of the Advent and Christmas seasons. Through scripture, poetry, prayer, and song, we reflect tonight on the good news of the Christmas gospel. We contemplate the mysterious way in which God comes among us, forsaking the trappings of power and majesty while lifting up the humble and lowly things of the world. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. So I'm going to say many thanks in advance to our wonderful musicians and music faculty, staff, and friends who have worked so hard to prepare this celebration through music and the word. We are going to begin our service this evening actually with an opportunity for you to support our College Drive Food Pantry and to support our choir students. And we all hope very much and pray that this service of worship will bless your observance of this wonderful and mysterious holy season. Thank you for joining us.
Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Save the refugee and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor from the power of the wicked. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Speak peace to your faithful people, to those who turn their hearts to you. For righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway for your feet. In the middle of the night, when stark night was darkest, then you chose to come. God's resplendent firstborn sent to make us one. The voices of doom protest all these words about justice, love, and peace. All these naive words will buckle beneath the weight of a reality which is brutal and bitter, ever more bitter. It is true, Lord, it is midnight upon the earth, moonless night and starved of stars. But can we forget that you, the Son of God, chose to be born precisely at midnight.
I find you in all these things of the world, that I love calmly like a brother. In things no one cares for, you brood like a seed, and to the powerful things you give an immense power. Strength plays such a marvelous game, it moves through the things of this world like a servant, groping out in roots, tapering in trunks, and in the treetops like a rising from the dead. Last night, as I was sleeping, I dreamt, marvelous error, that a spring was breaking out in my heart. I said, along which secret aqueduct, O oh, water, are you coming to me? Water of a new life that I have never drunk. Last night, as I was sleeping, I dreamt marvelous error, that I had a beehive here inside my heart, and the golden bees were making white combs and sweet honey from my old failures. Last night, as I was sleeping, I dreamt marvelous error, that a fiery sun was giving light inside my heart. It was fiery because I felt warmth as from a hearth, and sun because it gave light and brought tears to my eyes. Last night as I slept, I dreamt marvelous error, that it was God I had here inside my heart.
like every newborn, he has come from very far. His eyes are dazzled by the brilliance of the star. So glorious is he, he goes to this immoderate length to show his love for us. Discarding power and strength, girded for war, humility his mighty dress, he moves into the battle wholly weaponless. Christ, lying in the lap of his young mother, still a virgin. What can be sweeter than the babe? What more lovely than the mother? Look at the child, knowing nothing. Yet all that is belongs to him, so that your conscience should not fear but take comfort in him. Doubt nothing. Watch him springing in the lap of the maiden. Laugh with him. Look upon this Lord of peace and your spirit will be at peace. See how God invites you in many ways. He places before you a babe with whom you may take refuge. You cannot fear him, for nothing is more appealing to man than a baby. Are you affrighted? Then come to him. You will see how great is the divine goodness, which seeks above all else that you should not despair. Trust him, trust him. Here is the child in whom is salvation. To me, there is no greater consolation given to us than this that Christ became man, a child, a babe, playing in the lap of his mother. Who is there whom this sight would not comfort? Now is overcome the power of sin, death, hell, conscience, and guilt. If you come to judge this gurgling babe and believe that he is come, not to judge you, but to save.
Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture. And the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land. And they shall feed on the rich pasture of the mountains of Israel. And I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. See the Lamb so long expected come with pardon down from heaven. Let us haste with tears of sorrow, one and all to be forgiven. So, when next he comes in glory and the world is wrapped in fear, he will shield us with his mercy and with words of love draw near. of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away 
A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked and righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. 
The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her.
please stand in body or in spirit for the reading of the gospel. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Crinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to be delivered of her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, 
glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them.
near the straw, among the barnyard midwives, down in a livestock feeding trough, the birth of Jesus begins. The nursery of God's Son is a simple peasant home, a patch of ground much like any village child would have been born in during that time. The infant Jesus arrives in a one-room, split-level home, the guest house being full. Hospitality responds with the offer of the living room, a common yet intimate space furnished in the ancient Bethlehem style, resplendent with livestock any time the sun set. The cosmic stage is set against the backdrop of the ordinary. The journey of God's concrete involvement in our affairs takes shape with the lingering smell of straw and the indifferent gaze of cattle. The everyday suddenly becomes that one unique day. This night belongs to a crafty God, a God whose subtle craft is the generous gathering in of the hungry, the poor, the weak, and the lowly. Shepherds sitting in the dark give way to angels floating in light, and the message hovers and splits the night. God's communication is for the peasant poor, the ordinary obscure, the countless ones who live beyond the pomp and power and bustle of the imperial. What has God chosen? God chose an unwed teenage Near East Palestinian girl. God chose an old man with calloused hands. God chose them because the world overlooks them, discounts them, and writes them off as unimportant. Yet on that night, God chose the lowly. Though the alleluias boom with the bright light flowing as the angels sing with uncanny holiness from beyond, the song leads us to an average home, an ordinary spot. And it is in that moment that heaven and earth meet. Here in the hay, here just beyond the alley, there are no mosaics, there's no fountains, no arches or columns, no epic statues to mark the spot. The place of Christ's birth as a structure no longer stands. It's no pyramid built for death by slaves. It's not an astrological clock of stone. It's somebody's home. That's all it is. God is telling us, what truly endures the crush of time is not stone, but the human heart that welcomes the great hope and peace of the infant king. The heart of God beats in time with the human heart. And in that moment, it beats for the working poor and the forgotten obscure. It drums out a chorus of hope for the plain and humble of planet Earth. In the darkest night, the path becomes flooded with a clear light of a holy intention. God will challenge the murderous and demonic powers of this world, not with a legion of spears, but with the whispered words of love shared by a peasant family welcoming their son. There in that calm village, a lasting monument to human obscurity is erected by God's own hand as divine power bends low and kisses a plain and sturdy poor family with the full blessings of eternal heaven. Jesus arrives in this world as a simple peasant child born in a simple peasant home, swaddled in folds of cloth, nestled under a flock of stars by night. The weak and vulnerable infant arrives in the fullness of time. Our faith nudges us to hold something close, the peace of that split-level, one-room Palestinian house creeps a tad closer to us if we will hush our fears and still our rapacious longings for prestige. We must pause for one Bethlehem minute to behold the gift of the peace that is firmly given to us tonight. The peace of that night 
gives birth to the Prince of Peace. And every human heart that believes God chooses us not because of what we have achieved or what we have done. The peace of the shepherds kneeling in wonder. The peace of the Magi extending their gifts after the long journey. The peace of a teenager believed and trusted. The peace of the hard-working carpenter who has finally found a spot for his family to rest. What greater peace can there be than the peace that arises out of the simplest things? The peasant king will conquer. The lamb will roar as a lion. The child shall rule. These are the ordinary acts of God. May we faithfully accept them as extraordinary. Merry Christmas. Amen.
Join me in prayer. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you complete in every good thing, so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever.
Friends, go in peace.